The title of the message this morning is Pursuing the Right Vision. Pursuing the Right Vision. A few weeks ago, while thinking ahead towards 2018 and wondering um, what I should bring to the church as the opening message of this new year. While I was thinking about it, the word pursuit came very strong to my mind. I'm not going to say God spoke to me and God said. I'm not saying he doesn't. He, of course he does. But there's times that God speaks to us. So we, we know that God speaks to us in different ways. But for me, it was this, this word that I just couldn't shift. It was the word pursuit. Not trivial pursuit, but meaningful pursuit. I then discovered that the Bible encourages us to be involved in meaningful pursuit, and especially the pursuit of the right vision. Vision in the sense of what you want to achieve. All of us want to achieve something in life. And if I were to ask you to put down in a few lines what it is you want to achieve with your life, that would become your vision. That's vision. In 2 Timothy, I, I've been hunt, haunted for years with 222. I'm not going to give any details in that, but I'm haunted by those numbers. And this morning, and it wasn't planned, but I'm just going to be using uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22, um, as the verse that I want to bring to you at the start of 2018. So 2 Timothy 2, verse 22, 222. Uh, he says this, Paul writes this to Timothy, and he says, flee. The evil desires of youth. I thought about this even over the weekend, and I wondered, why is, Timothy, why is Paul focusing in on the youth? And then it struck me that it's in our youthful years when we face all sorts of challenges in life. We get to our teens. These days it's getting much younger, but we get to our teens and we begin to face challenges in life. And then it's on the basis of how we respond to those challenges that sets the direction of our adulthood. And if we begin to make wrong choices as teenagers, then that will follow us through our adult lives unless we deal with them and we in some way make better choices. But that's where it starts, because of life and because of life's choices. And I believe that Paul is simply saying, make sure that when you're at that age that you make those right choices. Flee the evil desires of youth. And then he says this, and pursue righteousness. Pursue righteousness. You know the word righteousness, a, 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 a lot of people would tend to run from that word because we think it's a religious thing to be righteous. The word righteous just simply means doing what's right. That's all it means. A righteous person is someone who does what's right. Pharisees took it to a whole different level. They made a religious thing of it. And they wanted to display the fact that they were doing right things, even though they were doing a lot of wrong things also. But to be righteous just means to be determined to do what is right. It's not a religious thing. He says, pursue righteousness, pursue doing what's right. And then he says, pursue faith. Love and peace, along with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Okay, so let me ask you a question to those who come to New Life City Church. And the question is this. I don't need the answers, but the question is this. What is it that brings you to this church? Why, why do you come to New Life City Church at all? Why are you here? What, what attracts you to this church? Is it the music? Is it the lighting, our cool setup, as it were? We're a contemporary, relevant church in many respects. Is that what attracts you to this church? Is it the girls? The guys? Hopefully the opposite. The girls, the guys. Oh, I know it's 2017, but believe me, I, I, I'm not afraid of what goes out on the internet. Oh, it's 18, goodness me. Somebody slapped me, waking me up, telling me that we're in a different year. 
2018, and it, it, it doesn't bother me what goes out on the internet as long as it's truth, but as long as we speak the truth in love. Some people speak the truth and they're, they want to grind their teeth together just to get it out there. We speak the truth and we speak the truth in love. But what is it that attracts you to New Life City Church? Is it because you believe that this church can help you in your pursuit of Christ? That you genuinely desire to follow him, to pursue him. And so you believe that in coming to this church, you're going to get encouragement and you're going to be challenged and you're going to be brought to a place where you will become a true, genuine follower of Jesus Christ. Is that why you come to this church? I would as the pastor of this church, the senior pastor of the church, I would hope that that's the case, but I'm not daft enough to believe that it is. Because I want to challenge you this morning regarding your pursuit of Christ. Solomon wrote in the Proverbs in chapter 15, verse 9, that God loves those who pursue righteousness. Now, we know that God loves everyone. We understand that. God is love. That's his very nature. That's his very character. But that does not mean that he turns a blind eye to things that people do. Whether they're sitting in North Korea or they're sitting in Belfast, God does not turn a blind eye to the evil and the wrong that people do. He is a God of love. He loves. That's his very nature. That's his character. But there are times when the Bible is very specific with regards to those whom he loves. And one of those occasions is right here in Proverbs 15 verse 9. God loves those who pursue righteousness, who pursue doing what's right. That's who God loves. Friends, let me say this morning that I don't care what other pastors are doing or not doing. This pastor will pursue righteousness. This pastor will pursue doing what's right. Will I always get it right? No, I will not. Will I always do right? No, I will not. But I will pursue righteousness. I don't care what other worshipers, and I'm a worshiper. I'm a worship leader. My determination is to worship Christ, not just with the singing of songs, but with the living of this life. Because worship is more than just singing songs in church. Worship is your lifestyle. And the Father still seeks those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. Who will worship him with their very lives and not just with their songs. So I don't care what other worshipers are doing or not doing. Although I do care what worship leaders in this church are doing or not doing. But this worshiper will pursue righteousness. This worshiper will pursue what is right in life. Why? Because God loves those who pursue righteousness. And so as we move into 2018, I want to challenge the people of this church to step it up. Let's not just look back on 2017 but let's look forward to 2018 with the determination that we're going to step it up. Step up your pursuit of righteousness. Step up your pursuit of doing what is right. Not to please Pastor Jack, but to please Almighty God because he loves those who pursue righteousness. So for a few moments I want to speak about pursuing the right vision. I almost decided just to preach on that verse in Proverbs, just to stick with righteousness and love and peace the whole way through. But it would make a lot of you too uncomfortable for the start of 2018. Although you're not going to be too comfortable anyway as we get into this short message. Pursuing the right vision. As far as I'm concerned, to pursue the right vision means to pursue a God-given vision. Not your own vision. Not a pizza-induced vision, but a God-given vision. Not a self-promoting vision, but a vision that is given by God that promotes Christ himself. And the importance of pursuing right vision is clearly highlighted in Proverbs, another verse written by Solomon in chapter 28 and verse 18 of Proverbs, 
where he says, without vision, and I know that the King James Version says, without vision, the people perish. But the literal translation of that verse is this, without vision, the people cast off restraint. In other words, without God-given vision, without the right vision, without the vision that comes from God himself, we cast off restraint to the point where we begin to do our own thing. Without God-given vision, without following his vision for our lives, we end up doing our own thing. Friends, if you do not pursue a God-given vision, then you're going to make one up of your own. And you're going to make one that fits with what you want in life, not what God wants. You make up your own rules and you will completely ignore the instructions that are coming from God. And this is not just those who are not yet Christians. And we use the term not yet Christians because we believe that if you're not yet a Christian, there are enough people praying for you that one day you will become a Christian. So you're not yet one. And maybe even this morning, maybe that morning when you will become a committed Christian and determine that you will follow Jesus Christ. But when we talk about those who make up their own vision, make up their own rules and ignore the instructions of Almighty God, the tragedy goes beyond just those who are not yet Christians because even those who are Christians are pursuing their own self-made vision where they have their own rules because it fits the lifestyle even of the Christian and yet ignores the instructions of God and of his word. This is why it's so important to make sure that the vision that we pursue is that God-given vision. Let me be bold enough this morning to tell you what a God-given vision is. And let me be even bolder by saying to you this. You're sitting today in a God-given vision. This is a God-given vision. When I picked up the guitar as a 16-year-old, I did so in pursuit of a God-given vision. Young man of Brown Square sitting in the front room of our little kitchen house at that time sitting with my first guitar on my knees, strumming it, trying to learn G, C, and D minor so I could play most songs, and then going on to the chord of D and the chord of C and so on. And I picked up that guitar at that time because I wanted to do something with my life that would honor God. Other people were picking up other things in Brown Square at that time even in our own home. But I picked up the guitar. For me, that was the start of my pursuit of a God-given vision. Young adults in this church, Jonathan mentioned, he's mentioned us so many, many times about the weekend at Ardaluan. As a young teenager, as a young person in my 20s and so on, I would have given my right arm to have had something like that in those days. To get away with other like-minded people to focus in on the things of God for those hours with no distractions. And yet we probably need to try to prize you into even thinking about going to this weekend. If you've already stepped up, you put your name down, we appreciate that. I don't know who has and who hasn't. How many have, how many have not. But you need to get there. If you're serious about that song we sang together about pursuing God, here's an opportunity to get alongside other people who also want to pursue Him and pursue that God-given vision. When I went off to Bible college, when Kathleen and I went off to Bible college as a 25-year-old, it was in pursuit of that same God-given vision. When we came back to the Shankill Road, back to our home In 1982, we've been here since 1982 serving this community as pastors. When we come back to the Shankill Road in 1982, it was in pursuit of that same God-given vision. When we bought the old stadium on the Shankill Road at the corner of Tennant Street, and what happened that since then today is a whole different story and not for this platform. 
When we bought the stadium back in 1989, it was in pursuit of that same God-given vision. When we launched New Life Fellowship as it was then, put posters of NLF all over the Shankill Road, scared the life out of people because they were there for two weeks to put them up at half ten at night. People got up in the mornings, all they saw was NLF. Even the police were writing in their notebook, NLF, what does it stand for? National Liberation Front, have we got another organization? Women standing at bus stops, overheard, talking to each other, saying, that, that's all we need, another organization in the Shankill. And we put it up for two weeks, but when we launched New Life Fellowship as it was then to New Life City Church today, 25 years ago in 1993, we did so in pursuit of the same God-given vision. When we bought this building in 2006, we bought it without the help of the UVF who wanted £50,000 from me so they could guarantee that, that we could buy this building. But they never got a penny from us. And we bought this building in 2006 and moved into it in 2009 because it took us those years to get enough money together in order to at least get something happening in this building. We bought this building in 2009, or 2006 and moved into it in 2009. Again, it was in pursuit of the same God-given vision. But I want to tell you this morning, friends, and we need to understand this, that the vision of this church is not about a building. The vision of this church is about people. We're not here just to keep a building open. We're not here just to keep doors open. This is about keeping our ears open to God and keeping our hearts open to the needs of the community, to the needs of the people. So this vision is not about playing guitars. This vision is not about beating drums. This vision is not about singing songs. That may all well be part of what's going on. This vision is not about creating a platform for sermonizing. This vision is about the pursuit of righteousness. The pursuit of doing what is right. It's about doing what's right even when it's tough to do so. Young people, when you get yourself into a situation and it's tough to walk away from it, it's tough to say no, it's tough to stop at a certain point, that's when the vision of God kicks in. That's when your pursuit of righteousness kicks in. That's when your pursuit of Christ we sung about kicks in. When we're all faced with those situations when it's tough to stand up for what's right, that's when the real vision kicks in. It's about doing what's right even though everyone else around you is doing wrong. And it's about doing what's right no matter what the world says and no matter what other Christians are saying. I hadn't planned to say this, but it's come to mind again, and, and I will repeat this. I've said this a few times in the past. A young 15-year-old girl, Christian, was getting mocked by her schoolmates because it was like everyone in her class, 15-year-olds, had all had sex with their boys and maybe with other girls. And at the end of the, when, when they were starting off another week, they would, they would talk about their es escapades of, of the weekend that had just gone by. And they would talk about who they were with and what, they did, the, what, and what they did. And in the times, they would literally ask her what she did at the weekend. And she would talk about, well, I went to church and shared what happened at church. And they mocked her, they laughed at her, and it went on for quite some time, week after week after week, until finally in a rage, she stood up in her classroom in front of the teacher because she heard the sniggering. And she says, I want to say to every person in this classroom, she says, I don't, I don't condemn you, but she said this, you need to know that I can be just like you anytime I want to, but you can never again be like me. What a stand for a 15-year-old to take. There was a young girl at that age who was pursuing vision, pursuing the vision of God. Even though it was tough to do so, when everyone else around, not just in school, but it, perhaps even in church, she was able to stand for what was right. Let me say, friends, that the vision of this church is a God-given vision to impact 
not just those who come in through these doors, but to impact and influence our community and to influence the world around us. The time's almost gone. I wanted to finish this by 12.30. The vision of New Life City Church is not just about an open building and open doors. We're delighted that our building is open when other buildings are closed. That our doors are open when other doors are closed. That our lights are on when other lights are off. But our vision is to be a God influence to our city and beyond. And Jonathan will be reminding us of that over the next three, four weeks or so. As he, as he ministers from next week for a few weeks on this whole aspect of vision. But where does it start? Let me finish by talking about where it starts. Where does it start? It starts here. It starts with us. It starts with how we connect with God. God knows better than anyone else in this room knows how each of us connect with him. And if we connect with him at all. Maybe the last time you told God you'll pursue him was when you sang that song. And maybe you'll not tell him that again until we sing that song again. But it starts with how we connect with God. It starts with how we connect with each other. And how we connect with others and our community and so on. Samuel said, come, let us go to Gilgal and renew the vision there. Let's go back to the place where we made that commitment to serve God, Samuel is saying. Let's renew the kingdom in Gilgal. I, I put in the word vision, but let's renew the kingdom there. Friends, I'm going to finish in just a moment. But I do want to say to you that some of you need to renew your vision this morning. Some of you seriously need to do that. Some of you need to revisit and renew your commitment to Christ. Don't let it just go on from one week to the next, from one month to the next, the way it was in 2017. Make a determination you're going to pursue Him by pursuing the right vision this year. Some of you need to actually come to the place where you're prepared to commit yourself to following Christ. Or you've thought about it many, many times. It's not just that you're here on here New Life City Church for the first time. You've heard it before. And yet the challenge comes to you this morning that it's high time for you to make that decision to follow Jesus Christ and to pursue Him, to trust Him, to put your faith and trust in Christ for the rest of your life and for eternity. Faith is never simple. You ask any Christian, anyone who, who genuinely pursues Christ, you ask any Christian if it's a simple thing, an easy thing to have faith in Jesus. I want to tell you something, 2017 was a hard year for a lot of people in this church and for some more than others. But at the end of that year, we still hold on to our faith. It's not simple. It's not easy. Faith is not pretending that everything is okay. But faith is working through those sometimes very difficult situations. Working through the issues. Working through the challenges of life. But doing so with the help of God and also with the help of others. And this church will do its best. We will not always be at your door when you need us. Sometimes we're not there when we should be there. But this church and this leadership, we will do our best to be there for you, to help, to encourage, and to support you. And all we can say to you is this. Don't give up on your faith in 2018. No matter what the devil throws at you, don't give up on your faith. Don't give up on the support of those who really, truly care about you. And people in, the, in this church genuinely care for you and for each other. Don't give up on the church that does its best to help and support. But most of all, don't give up on the right vision. And don't give up on pursuing the vision that God puts in your heart. What's God sent you today? How's the Holy Spirit challenging you this morning? We invited him to come and to fill this place. How is the Holy Spirit challenging you right now 
because I believe that he's doing just that. There are some of you that are Christians. A few moments, it was an uncomfortable ride for you. And you were glad we kind of moved on. But the Holy Spirit, Jesus says, will convict and convince the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment to come. So when the voice of Jack falls silent and the sermon ends, the Holy Spirit speaks on. And we trust that you'll respond to what he sent and that today you'll pursue a God-given vision. <laughs>